Hi, welcome to episode 4 of Writing with Sandhya. We're going to be talking about fiction, faction and all that action. I know in episode 3 we talked about non-fiction and the different genres over there and how it is such a you know big seller in the market. But there's nothing like fiction, is it? It's uh, so enjoyable to read and if you're a writer, it's uh, so much fun to create. I'm here with my wall of books. Uh, you saw my PG Warehouse last time, but I have some of my favorite books here. A lot more of humor and uh, travel. I think those are the genres that I'm particularly interested in. So let's talk about uh, the fiction market. Um, so fiction, uh, we can classify that into two or three main categories. We have literary fiction, you know, the kind that we learn in literature, in school and college. Uh, there's Anita Nair from India who still writes a lot of uh, literary fiction. I attended her workshop, which is called Anita's Attic. These are the books from the attic over here. And it was a wonderful experience. Then we have genre fiction. We talked about that, you know, the different categories in episode two. And, uh, you know, one question which a lot of people have been asking me is, uh, but a lot of the books that we read don't really fit into one of these categories. In fact, the books I'm writing don't really fit into these categories. What are these kind of books? Like what are Chetan Bhagat, right? Who is a big bestseller in India. What category is that? So that just comes under the general category of mainstream. And that's the vast majority uh, of books which you know that fall into that category. So what are the top selling genres you know, across the world? Um, any guesses? It is romance, and um, I remember, you know, growing up, all the girls used to read Mills and Boone. I don't know what they read these days. Uh, there's erotica, of course, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey, anyone. And my favorite, again, is mystery, crime. Uh, we did talk about Agatha Christie being the all-time bestseller in this genre, but uh, Ruth Rendell is one of my favorite, and uh, Rex Stout. I enjoy those books. Speculative fiction. Now, under speculative, there are lots of subgenres which are all very popular. There's fantasy, there's science fiction, uh, you know, some of thriller, horror, dystopian kind of books. So, what's dystopian? It's like when the world has, you know, come to an end and a very dark future, and you know what happens then. You know, think Frankenstein. Um, you know, Stephen King is of course the king of horror, and um, so these kind of books all fall under speculative fiction. So that's a huge, uh, you know, uh, market over there. Then we come to young adults, and under young adults, you have all kinds of books, you know, from spy and crime and uh, romance, fiction, all, all of that. So I think sci-fi, um, you know, romance, young adults tend to be very loyal readers. So once they get onto a particular writer or a series, they stick with it. So that's, uh, you know, market to tap into. Uh, children's books, of course, uh, after, you know, which are the top selling books of all time. Uh, I think everyone knows the top one, uh, after the Holy Bible and the Holy Quran, uh, it is the Harry Potter series, you know, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series, which are my personal favorite as well. Uh, I really enjoy those books. What about India? Uh, very similar, but uh, uh, the number one bestseller for many years has been mythological fiction over here. Uh, it started with Amish Tripathi's uh, blockbuster Shiva trilogy. And uh, there are many, many more books have been written there. There's almost a glut in the market uh, for these kind of books. Romance rules the, uh, rules the roost here as well, as well as thriller and horror. Horror is a growing genre here. In fact, there is even a Horror Writers Association and Neil De Silva is the president of that. Uh, he's also one of the authors who works with the book bakers, my literary agency. In fact, this is a book baker shelf, all the you know books written by authors in that agency, the ones that I've picked up. So let's uh, deep dive a little bit into some of uh, these genres and what are the subgenres, right? Uh, in romance, you have contemporary, you can even have paranormal. So here you see some mixing of different subgenres, historical, uh, inspirational, romantic, suspense, and as I talk, spoke about young adult. I used to always love Georgia Tare growing up and she had a lot of fun books uh, which were like romantic and also, you know, suspenseful. Uh, so uh, I, I personally enjoyed those books very much. Uh, mystery, uh, lots of subgenres over there. 
Uh, there's uh, something called cozy mysteries, which are like comforting and nice to read. Um, you know, true crime. We talked about that last time. Who done it? Um, there's nowadays this scientific, uh, you know, cyber crime kind of mysteries, uh, and then the you know the usual hard boiled detective stories, uh, police procedures. Uh, so many categories within mystery itself. So uh, if this is something you'd like to write about, I mean, think uh, from what information you already have or what you can get so that you can craft a good story, yeah. I mean, a good mystery story. Yeah. Fantasy. So there's a huge market here. Um, you know, again, the young adults, uh, of course, they kind of, uh, as I said, they're very loyal, but so are the adults, you know. Um, if you think of the Lord of the Rings, there are people who really are... Uh, go deep into it, it's a whole cult, they know all the different uh, characters and their backstories and front stories and whatnot. So yes, fantasy, uh, it involves a lot more work uh, and it depends on different markets uh, yeah, and all publishers don't you know, publish that but um, there are so many varieties of it, there's urban fantasy, there's uh, steampunk, epic, high fantasy, dark fantasy, right, sword and sorcery these kind of things. Um, there's certain kinds of fiction where magic realism, you know, is used. Um, I think uh, Salman Rushdie has used it to great effect um, and in other books as well. Gabriel Garcia Marquez's, you know, 100 Years of Solitude. I think that should be here somewhere. So this is just my wall of my favorite books. I have lots more walls with a lot of my other books and uh, some of these books are just, you know, waiting to be read as well. Um, okay, so the bestsellers, you know, when they talk of bestsellers, what does that mean? Uh, again, as I spoke about mainstream, so it could be like a like a general category, it's about life or, uh, you know, some particular one of these. Uh, Dan Brown, I think the Da Vinci Code is the number one, uh, you know, kind of a top bestseller of all time. It is kind of uh, really did very well in the market. So what are future trends? So these are all the ones that are already there and it's uh, it's so exciting to think about, okay, what is it that I, I mean, I can write or uh, if you already have something in mind, now you know, you know where to kind of slot it. Um, so how about some of the trends which are there right now, right? What is it that the new trends that people are looking for? The pandemic, of course, uh, you know, pandemic, uh, anything to do with that, people are intensely curious about it. And that naturally kind of leads to the dystopian, uh, you know, kind of fiction that I spoke about. And what is very interesting to me is uh, strong female leads are apparently very much the thing, and I'm so happy to hear that. So I uh, are female, LGBTQ+, plus, uh, all of these are also great topics uh, that we, the market is looking for. And with the future, things like artificial intelligence, robotics, you know, uh, fiction which brings that into your stories. So that's interesting. You can think about it if you, are the, you know, but all of these also require some amount of or a lot of research, depending on uh, what kind of story you want to write and how much of imagination you want to use. Right. So what about faction? I told you at the beginning, I'm going to talk about faction. So this is not fiction, this is not non-fiction, what is that? So it's kind of what it sounds like, that it's a blend of facts and fiction, uh, truth and, um, you know, not uh, truth and, you know, mixing your own imagination into it. So you create stories based on, maybe it is set in history and everything is historically perfect, but you or a character uh, is over there and you talk of it from that point of view. Right. Uh, you know, one of those inclusion questions which we keep asking is, oh, if you could have a, fam a lunch with a famous personality uh, who from the past, who would it be? Uh, mine personally would be, I think, Rabindranath Tagore. Uh, I really admire him as a writer. Uh, he actually even was awarded the Nobel Prize but returned it on uh, his own uh, ethical grounds. Um, so I have a very high regard for him. So I'd love to meet him, you know, lunch with Tagore. So if you write something like that, so maybe you research everything, everything is exactly right, but you know, you have introduced a character or you're writing from, you know, a particular point of view. Yeah, Roots is a book which I read growing up. Um, 
Alex Haley had talked about uh, going back to his ancestors in Africa, and uh, but he actually wrote it as a story. So uh, that is a great example of fiction as well. So with that cool tip, uh, you know, we'll end this episode. And now it's time to mix it up a little bit. I think you've heard a lot of overviews about what are genres, you know, types, categories, forms, media, all of those things uh, in these five, four episodes. Uh, I may want to do uh, interview some people, get in some guests to talk in future episodes of uh, this show. So look out for that. Till then, happy reading, happy writing. Uh, and do subscribe to this channel. Please like, comment and share. Um, really appreciate it. I know a lot more of you are viewing it than those who are subscribing. So please do subscribe and share it with people with whom you think uh, it will be of interest to them. Bye-bye.